So we focus on fireworks around the 4th of July, but it's important to note CPSC year round is concerned about fireworks. We, we deal with what's coming into this country at the ports to make sure those are compliant. We make sure what's out in the marketplace is compliant. And most recently we're doing recalls and we do them on a regular basis. Make sure if a, over, if a firework is overloaded, we'll do a recall with the company, get it away from consumers. CPSC removes thousands and thousands of illegal fireworks from the marketplace uh, just to keep the consumers safe. It's a wonderful time of the year. We celebrate our nation's birthday. Just a few reminders. First and foremost, make sure that fireworks are legal in your community. Beyond that, make sure that you're not using professional fireworks. Leave professional fireworks to the professionals. If your firework doesn't ignite, don't try to reignite it. Make sure that you have a bucket of water or a hose nearby if you're going to do fireworks in your yard. And beyond that, most importantly, don't give fireworks to kids. I do want to mention sparklers because sparklers we think are safe. They burn as hot as high as 2,000 degrees. They can burn. We see the highest rate of injuries in children under five because of sparklers. Be careful with sparklers. We want consumers to celebrate safely, but just be careful. So I work here in Washington, D.C. as a pediatric emergency medicine physician. And what I do is I treat ill and injured children. And injuries are actually the highest cause of death amongst children aged one and older. So this is why we're here today to talk about firework-related injury and safety. Because ideally, rather than treating these injuries after the fact, we want to get to them at the prevention level, prevent them before they even happen. And these injuries we see are indeed from legally available consumer fireworks. There's terminology out there, safe and sane. This applies to fireworks that don't create huge explosions or aren't airborne. However, I would argue that when it comes to children, there really is no safe and sane firework. We're seeing these injuries in children under five. Now, children of those age, they explore the environment about them by touch and feel. So even if a nearby adult is the one holding the sparkler, all it takes is that split second for the toddler to reach out towards that shiny, alluring flame, and it's all over. Because at those high temperatures, within two to three seconds, that child can sustain what we call a full thickness, third degree burn down to the bone. And even though the majority of injuries we're talking about are burns, again, many full thickness down to the bone, we do also see other injuries that can be even more severe. Eye trauma, where you have s penetrating injury, so something actually goes into the eyeball, that can lead to permanent vision loss. We see, in the worst case, amputation of fingers, of hands, or even other parts of the body. Si bien nuestros datos para el 2018 son preliminares, ya nos cuentan una historia muy seria. Cinco personas murieron por incidentes vinculados a dispositivos de tipo cohete aéreo, algunos de ellos de uso profesional. Nuestro mensaje es muy claro, hay que dejar la pirotecnia profesional en manos de los profesionales. Más de 9,000 personas fueron tratadas en emergencias el año pasado por lesiones vinculadas a fuegos artificiales, casi la mitad de las víctimas menores de 20 años. Y las luces de bengala o las estrellitas fueron la causa principal de lesiones en niños pequeños. La mejor manera de mantener a la familia segura es no haciendo, no adquiriendo y no acercándose a los fuegos artificiales ilegales o de uso profesional. Hay que dejar la pirotecnia profesional en manos de los profesionales. Es mejor asistir a un espectáculo público. Si opta por usar fuegos artificiales, asegúrese sean legales en su área y tome precauciones. Nunca hay que darle ningún tipo de fuego artificial a un niño, incluyendo luces de bengala o estrellitas. Siempre hay que tener agua en caso de emergencia. Nunca hay que tratar, por ejemplo, de volver a encender un fuego artificial que no se prendió. Y definitivamente no hay que usar fuegos artificiales ilegales.